Hi, my name is Keith Cooper for North Light Images and in this video I'm going to have a look at monitor calibration. But rather than necessarily high-end monitors like this, and actually this one here, I'm going to look at some solutions for more economical ones. In particular, there's this, the new, well, newish, a few months, Calibrate Display 123. Now, the name of it, all the marketing materials you'll see, it's aimed at simplicity. It doesn't include lots and lots of details about different settings and all the different stuff you can get. And that is quite deliberate because this is aimed at, and yeah, the name, yeah, it gives it away. It's meant to be easy to use. Now, I've got a list here, and um, this display is connected to this Mac here, uh, this display to this one here, this Mac Studio. Uh, this list here is on the Calibrate site, and it gives a huge great list of features of their software and their different hardware. Now, this doesn't have all of that. If you want all of these features here, you're going to need one of the higher level uh, devices. In particular, I'm not going to talk about calibrating, profiling the screen of this MacBook Pro here, because the display technology in here is not supported by this device for what you'd want. You need one of the more advanced devices because this is such a good screen. Uh, that I'm going to ignore this because essentially these are calibrated out of the box. Um, the quality of screen on this display here is vastly superior to any laptop device I've used in the past, and I've used Apple ones and that, so I'm, so I'm just going to talk about calibrating this BenQ monitor here. If you're wondering why they look a bit bluey-grey, it's because my standard lighting for when I'm doing videos is about D4000, so 4100K, somewhere around that. This display is hardware calibrated to 4100, uh, matches the lighting, matches the lighting I've got over here, which means that the colors generally look pretty good. This will look wrong. This is currently set to D50 or 5000, but that's just a preset. Ignore in a way the fact that I'm using this one here. This could be any old laptop and this could be any old screen. That's what this is aimed at. I just haven't got kit like that to test it on. So, you know, this could be a cheapo Windows laptop, uh, a screen that somebody gave you that they found in a garage. You just want to get better results. And this does make the cheaper the stuff you're using, the more obvious the results are. Anyway, what is it? Um, yeah, like all calibrators, it's just a device. Now, this is a nifty bright yellow color. It's surprisingly heavy. I was expecting it to feel lighter. No, it's quite solid. It's smaller than uh, any of the typical ones here. These are Calibrite and here's an older x Xrite model. So you can see quite a bit smaller than that. Now, it's a USB device. Uh, it's USB-C. Um, the more expensive ones come with a USB-C to USB-A adapter. So if you haven't got a laptop with USB C sockets on it, I, you're doing using an older laptop, like I suggested, um, then you will need an adapter, uh, a, a C to A adapter. It works just fine. They just not included it. I told you this is this is the budget version. Anyway, this I'm going to measure that. Now all I got need to do for this is just fire up the software. Now the download for this, go to it. There's a Windows download. There's a Mac download, and it's come up and. Here's the version of it with, uh, that you'll get if you're running this kit here or any of the other kit. Um, Calibrite Profiler, very much a work in progress. Uh, there are lots of still greyed out areas of functionality. So this does not do prints at all. This is purely a monitor calibrator. Uh, these are monitor calibrators. The software does it. Um, I can use one of these for projectors. You can't use this for projectors. Um, but that's the more complex stuff. Now, if you're wondering about, do you need the more complex stuff? Have a look at the features of the more complex stuff. If there are features that you can see no use for, or you don't know what they are, take that as a big hint that you probably don't need them. 
Now, would I use this? The reason I wouldn't use this is because it, I can't use it to do a hardware calibration on these particular monitors. Um, I can't use it on this, but I can use one of these on it. So um, there are limitations for it, but this is aimed at a market that is possibly new to color management and just wants it as a way of making screens look more accurate hopefully give a bit more accuracy if you're printing but you know that's a whole different matter anyway i'm just uh, this is plugged into here and i'm just going to pop it on the screen here now it has got a soft front to it there's a counterbalance weight so i'm just going to put that in the middle of the screen close the little window at the top you can see the device is flashing there put it in the middle of the screen you can tilt the screen back a little bit and it just keeps it in place you can use this with um, much more sensitive screens with special coatings and things just be careful when you put it in put it in place it just needs to be there um, the options i've got here it's really simple it says you know that it's detected two two displays incidentally you cannot do more than two displays if you've got three displays connected disconnect one of them do the profiling reconnect it's like it's a limitation of it it's spotted apple display and it says there's a BenQ SW2700. Now, this is a really nice monitor. I've used this for years. Um, it's, it's just an excellent external monitor for use for stuff like this. Because I find at 27 inch 4K, this is a 4K monitor, it's a bit too fine detail. Um, I, in many ways, I prefer using this resolution. Um, this is to SW272U. The equivalent would be the SW272Q, which is the resolution of this. But I've got stuff covering this. But anyway, this. Um, I'm going to select that. And you notice the software just jumps over to it. And uh, the device is in the middle of the target there. I can set this at its native brightness, or I can adjust it to and it just says photo now i don't get any options for setting different color temperatures all the stuff like that all the things that you would get here aren't there this is just for setting up photo use so we'll set it there set its photo sw2700 i click on next asks me to position the device in the right place and then all you do is just click on measure. Now, first thing it does, it offers to, you, you can adjust the screen. Now, I've set this monitor, normally I use this in a hardware calibrated mode, but in this instance, I've set it just as a dumb monitor. And I've used the brightness controls on the monitor to adjust. I've got a little bit that says here, tells me it's set at 120. 120 is the suggested setting for this. Um, it's okay. Um, I normally work with things a little bit darker than that. I tend to work at 100, but that's because I do print work. Um, this is as a general purpose setting. Um, it's what you would get on the photo setting on this one as well. But anyway, the brightness is set. A uh, little slider that tells me it's right there. Um, by the way, when you're doing this, make sure your monitor has been on at least 10, 15 minutes. I know that monitors don't need to warm up like they used to years ago. Uh, the old CRT monitors would drift over the course of half. Mind you, if I had the number of monitors um, that I in that I have in this office and they were CRT monitors. Well, first of all, there'd be no room for me. And second, it would be like an oven in here. They really used to chuck out a lot of heat, but uh, it's that. I'm just gonna click on next. Uh, measuring, oh, it's stage three. Do not move device. And it's measuring white, we're measuring black red, and it will now go through a whole sequence of colors. Now, I'm not going to leave this because it takes a few minutes to run through and we'll, we'll let it jump ahead to the finished bit. So here you can see that the colors are changing. It steps through all of these colors. So the process takes you know, five, six minutes. Um, you, there's no option to do more complex targets or anything like that. Remember, this entire product is aimed at being simple to use. If you want all of this complex stuff, then ideally you'll know why you want all this complex stuff and you'll get one of these other devices here.
you'll notice I've got the laptop is actually plugged into a power source. Uh, that's partly because I don't want the screen going to sleep midway through calibration. Um, if you've got a setting that means your display will blank after a while, be careful with it because it will completely mess up the calibration if it goes to sleep. Anyway, it's finished to doing this. Um, let's just take this out the way. Now, it says on here, we suggest that the profile reminder is set for two or three weeks and that you do it. Um, yeah, that's, that's big and up the roll rather a lot, really. If you are going for a monitor like the this calibrator like this, it's unlikely you're working in the kind of environment where it matters calibrating your, pro, your, your screen every few weeks. I would suggest doing it set a diary reminder to you know when you first set it up do one um, you know after a few weeks a month or something like that see if there's any change because if you're using an old monitor there may be a bit of drift in it less likely these days but you know it's always possible and then if it doesn't really make much difference do it set it for six months or something like that um, these displays are a lot more stable than they used to be uh, two or three weeks yeah that's fair enough. I mean yes if you're working in graphic design and whatever then yes you may want to calibrate everything every week or more often in some of yeah. the but then you're not going to be buying kit like this if you're in that sort of environment but anyway it's asked me for a name for the profile um, fair enough accept the name it gives you don't need to keep old profiles but uh, yeah you can do that I've set no uh, uh, no reminder on it I've not ticked the box for please send me relevant product support and user tips uh, yes I don't don't want you filling my inbox with stuff um, I'll find out if I need stuff there you can update the software as needed so I'm just going to save that The profile already exists. Please rename. Well, that's interesting uh, because I ran this this morning when I first installed it. Um, yeah, uh, we'll just change the name. It saves it. And here we go. We'll get a before and after display. Now, I, I have a minor irritation about this in that it, run, it steps through a before after sequence and you, you can't physically just go let's have a look at before let's have a look at it. it just sort of just automates an animation of it and then it stops and then if you want to see it again you have to click it again now it doesn't show much of a change here because this screen was calibrated anyway uh, you are likely if you're using uh, say an oldish laptop and an oldish monitor you are likely to see much more of a change now will this make your prints match your screen no it will not because there's no such thing I've, I've covered this in lots of videos but it won't actually do that but what it means is that you've got a far better chance of your colors here being reliable if your prints then come out too dark it's probably because your monitor is too bright now with this particular setting I can't alter the brightness now there is a native option so I could actually go back to the profiling run this again but instead of the photo setting go for native setting and on the native setting I can just leave it as is and just get it to run and I can adjust the brightness and then do the profiling on top of that um, whether you'd want to do that depends on what sort of stuff you do but as I say if, if that's too bright then using the native setting dropping the brightness remember I went through that brightness measurement step so you can actually take it say from 120 down to 100 um, that's one way of doing it but anyway there it is it's set up uh, very simple to use uh, far simpler to use than you know the amount of time it's taken me to explain here it works quite well do I have any issues with it uh, it might be a bit too simple for some but equally well it's more than complex enough for what many people actually need. Now, I hope that's been of some interest. If you've got any questions, let me know. Um, I've got all this kit for doing this, so I can always go back to test things and look at specific examples if people have got queries about stuff. But um, yeah, 
it works. Um, monitor calibration for you. Anyway, thanks for watching and bye.